Hey everyone, so today's video is of the hound pant I just got off of. I know I, I think I put on Instagram, like it must be three weeks ago now that we were going, or if I didn't, we were going on one. And right from the start, before we even left, I started doing filming and footage of us getting packed and prepped and getting there because I wanted to give you guys the full experience of us, us, us on a hunt. Um, but we didn't get the cat on this hunt. It wasn't, thankfully, at fault of the dogs or me. They only ran once on the second last day and we were like a day behind that track when we found it. We had a really, really hard time picking up leopard tracks on this hunt, I think, because the hunt was like 10 days. Maybe we were just unlucky and we landed on the wrong side of the cat circuits and so they weren't in the area when we were there. Whatever it was, they just weren't really any, there weren't any leopard tracks. We got a female feeding and a young male feeding, like very young, was still kitten, so definitely under the Zim age restrictions. And that was it. It was... Probably the deadest leopard hunt I've ever done track wise. And so I nearly wasn't going to put this video up because I figured it would be boring. Like, just no success at the end of it because that's kind of how it would have ended off and that would have been the best part of all of it. But then the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this is part of the story for the dogs and for me and for life. You know, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. And there's lots of reasons why that can happen. So in the name of being real with you guys, I've put up what I have of this video. It ends quite abruptly because obviously we didn't get a cat. And so there isn't really any tail end footage. But you know what? You'll get to see us getting ready to go. The hound's been excited. And you'll just get to see it being real. Sometimes other hounds you get them. And sometimes you don't. Having said that, if you do like what you see, I hope you will click the subscribe and click the like down below. And use the comment section because I would love to hear what you guys think. And I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoy what I have of this one. Okay, everyone, and welcome to today's video. So this is very exciting. It's Wednesday afternoon, but we leave for our dog hunt on Saturday. That's our first one this season. Um, that's not a wounded cat. So we're now getting everything prepped. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this is like four days, three days before the first day of the hunt or the day I'll be getting into camp and so we're now putting the hounds that we're going hunting with onto kibble so at home they eat suds and suds is just like a really thick stiff porridge and they eat it with stew and, and gravy meat and gravy but when we're hunting obviously it's a bit hard to have to carry meat and milly meal because of fridges and space so when we hunt we feed them kibbles so three or four days before we leave for the hunt we start feeding them kibbles yeah so they get used to them so like today they're not having sudza but they're still having meat and gravy with it and we're just about to start measuring that out get them onto the right food casper's washed collars and leashes yesterday so those will all be clean the dog blankets have all been picked out and tidied up so we're now in the early stages of preparation and there's a lot to get through there's so much packing but you guys will get all the videos as we go along and yeah, we're just going to see how it goes. But it's quite busy and I'm quite excited for this video. I'm looking forward to it, all of it obviously, because we get to go hunting and we get to take the hounds. And I'm looking forward to showing it to you guys. What are we doing? So Norman walks past. Casper, what are we doing? <laughs> no, Casper, you meant to go. These dishes are for the dogs that are staying. These dishes are for the dogs that are going. <sighs> eating mm. good morning everyone so it's Friday which means it's the day before we leave for our hunt which means it's pack day and wash the car day and tell the hounds that are staying behind I love them day because yeah they get a bit jealous when they don't get to go with so that is the plan right now I'm on my morning walk well before we get into this if I cough splutter sniff or sound horse at any point in this video like I have a little bit of the flu or a lot of the flu which might render the question why am I out walking with no jacket on but this is my last walk before we go hunting and I don't know when my next walk will be my next run is probably going to be with the dogs and like a mountain somewhere so which is fine but you have to make hay while the sun shines so this is my last peaceful walk for an indefinite amount of time I've got Alaska and Rigby with me as always and yeah, so we're doing this. I've got so many things on charge at home. 
cars parked and getting washed and today is just pack and prep so there's going to be a bit more footage of that and i'll take you through it as we go but yeah so if i sniff or anything please excuse that and thanks for clicking into today's video um you're about to see all the pre-hunt chaos that comes between we're about to go and when we actually manage to get out the yard okay everyone so i am back from my run and i'm still in the pre-packing stage of my life well yeah the prepping stage of my life so i don't know if this question has been asked but i do <coughs> carry a rifle when i run with the hounds on the leopard hunts but funny story i went through a period where i didn't because on the very first hunt i did with the dogs properly i took a 375 that was scoped and fyi scopes are not great to be used on like dangerous game situations i mean if something's charging you don't want to scope you want open sights but i was more used to that rifle so i took it and it had a strap on and was strap strapped across my back diagonally and i was climbing a mountain well we call it a gormo but it just means a rocky mountain and i was jumping from one rock to another and when i jumped from one rock to another my shoes because for some reason i bought boots with no treads like slipped and i just went to have a face plant and i caught myself on my hands but the gun like slid forward across my back with some serious force and I got hit in the back of the head with um with the scope and the bolt of the rifle and I was nearly concussed and I like stood up and fell over pretty much around two times before I was able to regain my footing and so after that obviously I was a bit off of rifles I was like well I'm with the dogs and obviously we always have a professional hunter there um, when the hounds are hired so I didn't think I needed one but it is actually safer and so I've gone back to carrying a rifle, only now I carry my 416 Rigby, which I don't think I've showed on camera yet, but this, this gun is now basically like, like, if rifles were boyfriends, it would be this rifle. So yeah, and I don't actually like using a strap for dangerous game hunting because more often than not, like if you're getting charged or something's happening you don't want a strap because it gets in the way and life being life nine times out of ten it will hook on a tree or hook on a branch and it'll just be annoying but when I'm running with the hounds I also have to carry their GPS and their radio and I have to be able to climb which means I need both hands so for the dogs um, when it's not wounded leopards just a normal trailing ones like this hunt we're going on now for them I use a strap so that is what we are fitting and then we're gonna pack up pack up the 416 and just sort his ammo and then that'll be the gun side of things pretty much done I still have all the collars charging and torches charging and yeah well that's still to come throughout the day so we're on our way though alright everyone so packing is almost done I'm waiting for Casper to bring me the hook lines for the dogs and the dishes which go in that trunk there there, Ooh, there we go that trunk and then I'm gonna just get diesel move the car and we'll start packing the vehicle so we're on our way up but um the pile I know it still looks like it did this morning but we we are pretty much done now just a few things left oh you know what we should do an introduction so this is all of the dog equipment plus spare medical for them this is the backpack for when we run with them but it goes in the trunk this box has my radios and my radio chargers and my torch chargers and my torches and my tape measure and my knife and a deck of cards because I'm that prepared. Then the blue box is the first aid kit for people which stays in my car. That's got medicine for like not emergency stuff so the flu or malaria you know things that you can wait to get to a little bit. The green one is the dogs also sort of the same the stuff that it's too hard to carry or that they can wait to get to. The backpack has two other first aid kits, which are infield first aid kits, so like for an emergency in the middle of the bush. And there are dog dishes in there, so we can water them when we're on the run. Those are the dog collars, um, and the chargers for the collars, and an inverter in case I need to charge off my car, because I don't know what the plugs are like in camp. And yeah, that's the bulk of it. My bags are on the end. You see, I only have one bag. I, fe I feel it prudent to point this out. Me? one bag. Hounds? One, two, three, four, five, six sets of things, but that's the joy of dogs, I suppose. But you know, last year before we went on our hunt, I did a video like this, and I'm going to complain about the same thing. Look how much stuff they require. I have one bag. This is my bag. My kit bag, and that's it. But the dogs is a trunk, and the dogs is extensive first aid kits, and boxes, and 
this is this is just the inside stuff, right? There's other things outside, like the containers for their water and their dog food and their dog blankets, and the list just does not end, all right? The hounds are the packing problem in this situation. It is not me. Casper, where are we going? <laughs> Toraya. <laughs> Are we going to Senga? Everyone, we are now on the road. We're about to hit the tar from the ranch, and we've got a six hour drive ahead of us, so we'll see who's still barking by the end of it. But yeah, we go. Alright, everyone, so I'm in camp. This is the room. Hold on. Let me clap. This is the room. And my ablution's back through there, so it's very nice um, and comfortable. And also warm, because I think it's get sunshine in the afternoon, so at least tonight it will be warm. Um, the pH and the client are out. I'm sure I'll see them a bit later this evening. The dogs are all hooked up. Trackers are mostly sorted. We've had a bit of a miscommunication about tents, but we'll cross that bridge when the professional hunter gets in. And then, yeah, we're on our way. At least we got in, but it was a long drive. I think we got in half three, nearly four. But better late than never, and the camp is beautiful. You guys will see some footage of it. You guys all hooked up. Oh, the line of dogs behind camp. Hey? So this is the tracker's quarters, slash the dog's quarters. And we've just put them in, so they're all chilling and drinking water. And we'll feed them just now. We're waiting for the water to boil for their cubes. But this is behind the front part of the camp, so it's quite pretty. And at least they have a lot of shade. So here's our dining room and staying in area. It's very pretty how it's been done with the rocks. And you step out and have the view over the front, yeah. Which is also very pretty, out over the dam. Alright everyone, morning. So it's morning number two on the leopard hunt and no tracks yesterday, so far no tracks today, nothing on bait and it's nearly half eight so I think, I don't think we'll be running today. Um, the conditions here are really dry so it's going to be a hard run for the hounds in most places but definitely doable if we can get on early enough and not too far behind the cat and at least with the ground mean bear we can help with the visual tracking where they ship us so I'm um, Confident we're going to get the cat. Just need to, just need to wait and see. Um, it's really cold, yeah. Today's really windy, also not good for the dogs. So I don't mind us skipping a run today. But hopefully the weather goes away and come tomorrow we can, we can win. And then I'm just waiting in camp because this is where the best network is in case I have to get a hold of me for something. But otherwise, I think. It's going to be a quiet day and then hopefully tomorrow we'll have some luck. Morning everyone. So it's morning of day four. It's freezing cold. I slept in these um, last night. But anyways, I'm out looking for tracks today, which is nice. So far nothing. So far I haven't heard from the pH. So I don't know if we're going to have another quiet day. But the hounds have gotten out. Getting to see a bit more of the area. I'm going to flip the camera and show you the sunrise. It's beautiful. Isn't that spectacular? So at least I have good views while I make the track so early in the day. What are we doing, Mzenga? I'm waiting for leopard. I want to kill leopard tomorrow. Kusen. <laughs> what are you doing, Norman? Just I'm relaxing. Um, I'll warm up for tomorrow. You know, if someone says relaxing while they're sweeping, it's like they're lying. Because sweeping is technically work. <laughs>